A very good morning to all of you. Uh, on behalf of Sri Lanka Medical Association, uh, we would like to welcome you all to this uh, expert talk uh, on health sector sustainability through sustainable consumption and production-based equipment maintenance. This is a collaboration between the uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association and Sustainable uh, Consumption and Production Forum of Sri Lanka and College of Medical Administrators Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka Medical Association has been conducting uh, different seminars, conferences, webinars on uh, different aspects of uh, health and uh, related uh, uh, aspects. But this uh, forum is a little bit different from what we have been conducting previously. Now this is a collaboration between two unique uh, professional forums. One doctors from Sri Lanka Medical Association and engineers from the uh, Sustainable Consumption and Production Forum of Sri Lanka as well as medical administrators from the College of Medical Administrators Sri Lanka. So uh, to enlighten you about, the, uh, about this collaboration as well as our broader theme of excellence, equity and community for SLMA 2023, I would like to respectively invite Dr. Vinya Ariratna President of Sri Lanka Medical Association to address you all and enlighten you about the objectives of this forum. So over to you. Morning. First of all, I would like to very warmly welcome all of you to this uh, expert talk on health sector su sustainability through uh, SCP-based equipment maintenance. I would like to warmly welcome our resource persons today, the experts who are participating in this uh, um, expert talk today, uh, Dr. Sudhar Dharmaratna, uh, Deputy Director General, Laboratory Services of the Ministry of Health, and Dr. H. M. Arjuna Tilakaratna, Director, Teaching Hospital, Peradeniya, Senior Medical Administrator, and also uh, the engineers who are leading the discussion today, Engineer Nimal Pereira, who is the President of Sustainable Consumption and Production Forum, and uh, also Engineer Nihal Kure, and actually uh, it was not, uh, Engineer Nihal Kure's uh, press article few weeks back, which was the trigger for this event to be organized today, which I'll mention in a minute. And uh, also all the other um, uh, doctors who are participating online, and also it's not just the doctors, there are other medical staff who are dealing with equipment from all over the country who are joining uh, this forum today. Ladies and gentlemen, so the Sri Lanka Medical Association this year has chosen the theme towards humane health care, excellence, equity, and community. Manavavadi Sauke Seva Vakkara, Vishishtatwaya, Sadharanatwaya, Saha Prajava. Make a tamay ape te mava. It in other dinner may ape Vishesha Vedasata Hunter Sahaba given ape sealuma. This is the way we are going to do this. 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 Three weeks ago, uh, Engineer Nimal Pereira, uh, sorry, Engineer uh, Nihal Kure wrote an article which, uh, which uh, actually got my attention. That was about the failure, of, the equipment failure in uh, the government uh, hospitals because he has been uh, he has been in this sector for more than 30 years as an engineer and also been involved in particularly uh, maintenance of equipment and uh, highlighted that this is a major problem and the engineers are also willing to help now they are all joining today completely voluntarily and sri lanka medical association following this theme of providing uh, quality health care to our community the doctors alone can't do it. The state itself can't do it. We have to collaborate with other organizations as well. And this is a time that we need the expertise of different sectors, different se disciplines to come together, work together to save our country. So we thought that we had an initial discussion. It was very, very, very uh, encouraging. And they came totally prepared, very professional, and said we are willing to work with uh, SLMA and the health sector. Uh, to uh, help in whatever the ways we can to ensure that the medical equipment in 
hospitals are functioning properly. And we can then later uh, extend it to other areas, infrastructure maintenance and so on as well. So let's start with this because from the thermometer to an advanced MRI scanner uh, to chemotherapy equipment, there's a range of medical equipment that we use in the health sector. Unakattu in the la MRI antre dakwa vichala paraseka vihidunu vaidhi upakaran api pavichikanwa. Uh, and most of the time, we entrust the maintenance part to somebody else. We don't feel that it's our responsibility, the users, we also have a responsibility to maintain this equipment. So that is the uh, kind of discipline we thought as SLMA, whose mission uh, is to serve the profession and serve the community. Serving the profession means we are contributing as the apex organization of all doctors in Sri Lanka, which includes uh, uh, the doctors in the state sector, the private sector, academia, the non-government sector, all are represented here. And we are then, uh, if we do something that is to affect the policy and the system, that will be very sustainable. So that's the background to this whole uh, um, uh, exercise. And this is only the start. And they have committed their time voluntarily. And uh, we will work also very closely with the Institute of Engineers. We have the Vice President here, Engineer Kosala. So uh, let's consider this as a partnership that we are building and also sustainable, uh, sustainable Consumption and Production uh, Forum of Sri Lanka. It's an international network. I'm sure uh, Engineer uh, Nimal uh, <coughs> will be uh, um, uh, explaining more about it later. So uh, it's with great pleasure that I welcome all of you and also extend our deep appreciation on behalf of the Council of uh, the Sri Lanka Medical Council, uh, Medical Association for to, uh, to be able to hold this uh, important seminar today. And let's have a very fruitful discussion uh, as part of our ex uh, expert talk for this week. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for enlightening us about the uh, broad objectives of uh, this workshop and the background to this workshop as well. So I would like to now invite uh, Engineer Nihal Kure, Chartered Mechanical Engineer, member of the uh, Institute of uh, Engineers Sri Lanka, and a uh, very well-known engineer in the circles of climate change as well as cleaner production, uh, to enlighten you about the uh, objectives of this uh, Sustainable Consumption and Production Forum. What are the objectives and what are the outcomes that we are expecting out of this uh, special forum? Sir, so over to you. Thank you, Dr. Lohidu. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the Sri Lanka Medical Association for giving, giving us this opportunity, uh, which actually to serve the, our community and uh, the wider community of this country. And uh, my special thanks to uh, Dr. Vinya Ariratna, because uh, he is the only one who responded me to, to the article that I just wrote, uh, which really uh, triggered all this. If it's not for that, uh, I don't think as any, many other articles we write, sometimes uh, uh, no, no response and no follow-up. So it's, I, I'm really thank, thankful to you, sir. Uh, first of all, I would like to briefly explain uh, uh, what made me study the uh, so-called downtime of equipment. That's my, one of my aims was to talk about the downtime of equipment used in hospitals. Because downtime is very familiar to engineers because we work in uh, industry with machinery, and we know what downtime is. And uh, most of the time, now, when I was working in government organizations, also at that time, in the 1970s, uh, if downtime means that's the, uh, the, the, that's the uh, time that the maintenance engineer is very, very scared. Because some of those chairmen, I, I remember, they were very scared of even five minutes stoppage of a machinery. So downtime is something that is very important. So um, uh, the, the, during this, this period, I have been hearing a lot of like, uh, uh, I mean, a lot of in information and stories about like uh, downtime of equipment in national hospitals. Uh, and as well as I have read a couple of uh, very good studies done in Sri Lanka 
uh, by uh, eminent university academics. Uh, one is Ms. Professor Sarad Dasanayaka. Uh, on, on some studies on the downtime of equipment in some of the hospitals in Sri Lanka, uh, as well as it is, uh, I mean, it's common knowledge that uh, downtime, uh, unlike in a, in a normal organization, downtime of a equipment in a hospital means it can lead to a lot of things, like it can lead to fatalities. So this is the reason why really I thought this, this must be uh, brought to the notice and then try to help uh, using our own experiences to ensure that uh, we, we minimize downtime so that the equipment availability is high in, in, in our hospitals, especially in our hospitals. Uh, of course, the, uh, be mindful of the fact that hospital equipment is not only medical equipment, it's also non-medical equipment that, will, that is contributing to, uh, even, even if an AC breakdown can lead to, for example, non-medical equipment, can lead to uh, the problems, you know, of, of providing services, and it can lead to even fatalities. So some of the equipment, I think uh, Mr. Nimal Pereira, my colleague, will, will explain some of these things uh, related to all these things. So, but uh, one of the main uh, reasons for downtime is actually uh, is the level of maintenance. Because level of maintenance is a vital factor to in keeping the downtime low. So the the uh, advantage is now the level of the the, the the you know the field of maintenance has developed such an amount uh, nowadays a lot of companies are really close close to even especially international companies close to zero downtime. Their aim is zero downtime uh, and 100 percent availability. At least that is the aim. So in fact, it has developed from you know. In the good old days, we talk about breakdown maintenance. We only maintain when we break down. But then it went from preventive to predictive maintenance. And then, of course, now autonomous maintenance, which is one of the pillars of the uh, total productive maintenance, TPM, which is based on the responsibility of the equipment operator or the user. Not only we, uh, depending on the or separate maintenance division or, or the supplier. So it is the involvement of the operator and the user, uh, which is so-called autonomous uh, the maintenance, and then which, which led to uh, total productive maintenance systems. So there are you know, a lot of systems that we, we can think of. In fact, the, the Industry 4.0 approaches for more automation is sometimes also can be used, especially in very vital equipment in the medical, uh, in the medical field. So. Um, one thing to realize is that this means that we one must not totally depend on the equipment supply to maintain or repair. That is the mistake sometimes we are doing. Even uh, my friend was telling that even if, if a if a AC of, of your own house, we don't only depend on the on the, on the supplier to wait till the filter is you know clean. So we we have to have our own system to maintain um, the, the equipment, not only depending on the on the supplier. But so, but uh, one important thing is that uh, when you want to maintain an equipment uh, or look after the equipment, you have to have a complete set of information on the equipment. Now, uh, in order to uh, diag in order to even diagnose and, and repair. So, uh, in fact, uh, in Europe and even in the USA now, uh, the uh, the uh, they, they have already uh, is implementing the what you call the right to repair act actually this came during the covid covid time when when the doctors were struggling to you know run the hospital equipment and they sometimes they had to repair repair and somehow run so during that time they thought okay if the if the if the supplier is mandated mandated to supply the information then the problems will be less so therefore uh, they, they are now they are implementing the, what you call the Right to Repair Act. Now already uh, EU is uh, implementing this. Uh, it's not only for hospitals, even any other. You know, because repair is one of the areas where uh, the you know the, when you talk about three R. The, the second R is you know three R means uh, uh, um, the, the what you call the uh, the uh, you, you know uh, the, the, when you call three R you 
reduce, uh, then uh, reduce the, uh, now reuse is associated with reuse, repair and reuse. So the repair part is very important these days because that, that ensures that uh, we, uh, we conserve resources. In fact, uh, uh, the SCP, when Jamal talks about this, he will explain all these things. So, uh, but uh, the advantage in, in a hospital is that there are, we can learn a lot from the medical, medical practices. For example, it's the maintenance of a machine is very similar to maintaining your, your uh, 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 patient. For, for example, we have preventive care, then we have a diagnosis, diagnosis, uh, then we do tests, like measurement, and then uh, we analyze the causes, and then treatment, and then of course, importantly, uh, record keeping. I think Sri Lanka cell system uh, can boast about the record keeping and the data collection, uh, which enables the doctors to, you know, uh, do a, uh, deliver a proper uh, service to the patients or, or look after the patients. So we want to establish the culture of record keeping of equipment and machinery on machinery, track the downtime and analyze the failure. Now very often we, we hear incidences of equipment failure, but very rarely we hear about what are the reasons for that failure. Sometimes it's not only management and other failure, but there are more technical details that we must analyze if any failure. Now, there are a lot of like, uh, you know, um, incidences where many accidents and many failures led to uh, redesign of the machinery and equipment and then uh, so that future such failures will be minimized. So these are some of the, the things that we can learn from the medical practice. And also life cycle of equipment really starts not uh, from design, procurement, installation, testing and correct usage. And even the conditions, how the machine has to be uh, installed is very important. So that is, that is where the concept of SCP, sustainable consumption and production, blends very well. Very well uh, with the uh, broad objectives of like maintenance of machinery. So, that is uh, the really, this, this is a very good marriage, and I, I think uh, this collaboration between uh, SCP and of Sri Lanka and SLMA is a landmark initiative to ensure health sector sustainability. So, and high quality equipment maintenance. So, what next is the question? So, I would like to end by actually comparing uh, a surgical operation. Uh, even recently I heard the uh, uh, very successful operation. Uh, we hear uh, marvelous, uh, you know, uh, ways that they have done it. It starts from planning and also a lot of teamwork. A lot of teamwork is there. Not only the medical, the, the doctors, there are so many others coming into the scene. And then they, they do meticulous planning. And also um, they take a lot, a lot of care in the, in the, you know, the preparation work. And then even after the operation, they know what exactly has gone wrong, and then record keeping. I think this is the sort of the approach that even though you can allocate money, it won't solve the problem. It will solve the problem for the moment. But in the long run, I think we have to have a very good teamwork, as Dr. Adirath also said. It's a, it's a time that we all get together and pool our resources and identify our stakeholders. Even a supplier uh, is a stakeholder, so we must have a very good relationship so that uh, even the smallest equipment can be maintained uh, to run with zero downtime. That's, the, that's our aim is zero downtime. Uh, so let me just end by telling that there's a lot of opportunity in, in, in the national hospitals, even for the learning process even for our university students, and there are so many people, I think it's a marvelous opportunity. You can, I can, when I think of the equipment available in, in national hospital, it's a, it's a place where engineers and even other technical people can lot of experience and learn. So let's uh, put all these ideas into, into operation and then see that uh, we will not hear many of these failures, but the, the, you will be seeing happy patients. Thank you very much. Thank you, Engineer. Thank you for enlightening us uh, on the engineering aspects as well as engineers' perspective uh, on the health sector, equipment maintenance, and production.
So to begin the technical sessions, I would like to invite following dignitaries to the head table. Uh, Engineer Nimal Pereira, President, Sustainable Consumption and Production Forum. Dr. Sudat K. Dharmaratne, Deputy Director General, Laboratory Services, Ministry of Health. Dr. H. M. Maruchuna Tilakaratne, Director, Teaching Hospital, Pera Deniya. Sir. Thank you. So, our first speaker today, Engineer Nimal Pereira, who is the uh, President of uh, Sustainable Consumption and Production Forum of Sri Lanka, and former President of Sri Lanka Energy Managers Association. And he is a leading consultant in the areas of uh, energy, environment, climate change, and sustainable development. So today he will be highlighting us the importance of health sex sector sustainability through sustainable consumption and production-based equipment maintenance. Sir, so podium is yours. OK, uh, thank you, Dr. Lahiru, for the introduction. And uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, given us to uh, uh, kind of uh, bridging uh, uh, two different uh, communities, engineering community and uh, uh, medical community together uh, through the, uh, the bridge of uh, sustainability. I assure and I am sure that uh, this uh, uh, collaboration will be a very a uh, fruitful one for the future uh, sustainability aspect or the uh, sustainable development of the country uh, through this uh, initial program. Basically, what I want to share with you is about the, the hospital equipment maintenance uh, through the approach of uh, SCP, Sustainable Consumption and Production Approach, and then finally to uh, achieve the sustainability in the country contributing to the global sustainability. Of course, this, was, uh, this initiative uh, is triggered by uh, my colleague, uh, Engineer Nihal Kure. Unless otherwise, uh, still we will be, uh, maybe we are living apart uh, rather than making this kind of uh, uh, combining each other. Uh, his article on the, uh, the patients suffer due to equipment downtime in national hospitals. Uh, that was the main uh, the trigger, triggered article which we uh, came across. And uh, thanks to Dr. Vinyari Ratna also, the president of SLMA, uh, taking this uh, case very seriously and uh, uh, starting the, the designing part of this uh, particular bridge to combine these two communities. Uh, when we talk about the hospital equipment, there are two categories which I can come up with. Of course, uh, from the medical point of view, there may be different, different uh, kind of uh, uh, definitions. But in my case, I will uh, basically, uh, uh, let's say, uh, categorized into two categories, the uh, direct health or operating or so oper operation support equipment, like uh, as uh, Dr. Vinyari Ratna mentioned, the starting from small thermometer, uh, BP apparatus, ECG machines, X-ray, MRI, CT scans, uh, and other special surgical equipment, etc. And from the other side, uh, the indirect or non-medical supporting equipment, like power generators, uh, escalators, UPS systems, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning equipments and systems, uh, which are very vital, in, especially in the, uh, within the surgical systems, especially in the operation theaters, and uh, waste management systems, of course. Now, I have gone through a number of organizations on this organ uh, the equipment, like especially uh, focusing on this indirect equipment, uh, which has a lot of uh, areas which we have to take into account to manage the, uh, uh, the perfect, uh, the sustainable medical system, med operating system in the country. And few salient points highlighted by uh, Mr. Engineer Nihal Kure in his article, the medical equipments and the life-threatening consequences. That is very important. Uh, which I want to highlight, and also about the zero downtime. Down 
Uh, I could remember uh, when we were learning from Japanese, especially uh, during our JICA trainings, uh, always they were talking about the zero uh, downtime, zero mistakes. So uh, my dream is in our country when we will be able to come to that situation. At least if we can put up a foundation today uh, towards that uh, very strong foundation with a good uh, you know, kind of a future plan, of course, at least the future generation will entertain the benefits of zero downtime, uh, especially in the medical sector. And then, uh, broadly speaking, the asset management with modern information and uh, the tracking system, including uh, the artificial uh, AI systems and so on. And then Sri Lanka should seriously consider about the legislation at a time when the country cannot afford new equipment. I don't want to explain it now. We are at a very serious point about our economy. So at this particular point, are we still going to get and dispose it? And then <coughs> we should be make a, uh, and then uh, make medical services more affordable, efficient, and more very importantly, sustainable. The sustainability aspect of it. And then implementing state of art maintenance systems in the health sector. Because I can remember, uh, I, did some, I made some contributions to some of the uh, national hospitals like uh, uh, Ampar Hospital, when Lung, uh, Dr. Lanka Jaising was there. Uh, the systems he uh, created at his uh, operation was, uh, he's tr he was trying to get into this uh, uh, zero downtime situation, or the zero down, downtime point. And I can remember when I uh, had a uh, visit to the hospital to see the, uh, the kind of uh, the, uh, the performances, evaluate the performances, and I asked him some uh, records or maybe a kind of a data uh, on this particular thing, particular subject area. Then immediately he opened his laptop and gave me the information in his fingertip within a couple of minutes. So those are the points actually we have to take it into account in our uh, system, even to you know uh, repeat it in the in our total hospital system. That's how I feel about it. And talking about the sustainability, I'm sure that I don't want to uh, reiterate uh, or just uh, remind you about the triple bottom line approach about the sustainability. Uh, basically, the economic uh, viability and then community well-being and the environmental stewardship, or basically, say, uh, we can say a triple bottom line approach, economic, social, and environmental uh, the balance. And uh, in spite of this one, again, what we are facing today, the major challenges, it, will be, it, it is common to all of us, not only for the general public and even uh, to the medicals or medi uh, the medical practitioners or maybe engineers or general public, the climate change, the plastic pollution, the loss of biodiversity, these are the very serious threats we are facing today. And we have to uh, take these challenges and uh, through the sustainability uh, point of view or through the sustainability per per perspective, how we can address those. If I highlight some uh, particular areas like global warming and climate change, I don't want to explain you the, uh, the situation what we are facing today because of the, uh, the increasing uh, global greenhouse gases. You can see the loss of uh, the territories by different uh, animal communities, and even the problems what we are facing due to the heavy rainfall, forest fires, not only limited to Sri Lanka, but even to the other countries, the well-developed countries. You can remember very recently what happened in Canada because of the severe uh, 
forest fires, even the adjacent countries. The New York City was getting a get, uh, lot of uh, severe impact uh, of uh, air pollution. Can we say uh, no, nothing will happen to us in future? I don't think. And again, the most important factor, last 20, uh, April 2023, the global uh, carbon dioxide level was 422.73, that is in April. And in May, according to the information, it is 423.73 sharply increasing, where we are heading to. Other than the mitigation, the question what we are asking is, the professionals, the uh, maybe engineers, maybe medical practitioners, medical community, are we get ready to take the cha challenges of this one? And because of this one, thanks to the natural ocean, because of the ocean, the ocean absorbs majority of the carbon which we are emitting, or the carbon dioxide we are emitting, and the ocean is getting acidified. The consequences of this one will be very enormous, unpredictable. Our food supply chains, the, uh, the protein supply systems, a lot of areas will be severely affected in future. And again, uh, because of these uh, increasing uh, uh, the threats of uh, climate change, the global temperature changes are becoming very se very severe, and the, the circled part, the super El Nino conditions, still we are unpredictable situation. We don't know what will happen in the future. Maybe this will be the community or the kind of uh, group of people who are living successfully in this world with this civilization, maybe the next generation won't be. We don't know. The situation is very, according to my understanding and my studies with uh, the climate change sector, I'm very serious about it. And the next one is the plastic pollution. 12 million tons of plastic is dumped into the oceans every year. 80% of the all studied marine, marine debris is in is plastic. Eight million pieces of plastic pollution make their way into the ocean every day. And very recently, a uh, kind of experience what I had, uh, I had a meeting at uh, Setsiri Pai, and I went, for the lunch I went to one of the adjacent uh, uh, eating house, and then uh, after my meals, the lunch, they served me a bottle of uh, water, plastic bottle, and then uh, two of my other colleagues, they just, they opened the bottle and they mm, uh, had it, but I, I was always, I am a little bit concerned about the plastic, uh, the water contained in the plastic bottles. And I took one zip, and I felt the plastic uh, taste. Immediately, I stopped it. I throw away the, even that particular zip. What is this? Nanoplastic and microplastic. What will be our future? This is uh, <coughs> about some of the uh, captures or the highlights, graphical highlights. The loss of biodiversity. The reduction uh, in the, uh, the genetic, uh, genetic diversity to collapse of entire ecosystem, including the humans. That this underpins the ecosystem services providing the backbone of the global economy because the biodiversity provides the backbone of the global economy. So if we are breaking it, how we are going to manage the, uh, the global economy, a sustainable economy? Some few facts, over 12,000 species are uh, threatened with uh, extinction. One third, of, uh, one third of world coral reefs die off. It's only a couple of facts, but there are many more. Why this is happening? Invasive species, maybe pollution, 
climate change associated from the global warming and over ex exploitation of uh, especially the fish community and habitat losses. The world continues to use uh, natural resources unsustainably, not sustainably. The, these are some of the figures, uh, 2010 and 2017. Global material footprint uh, in 2010 was 73.2 billion metric tons. Because of the introduction of the sustainable development, we felt that, no, there will be a reduction. But the unfortunate part is, even in 2017, the global material footprint was somewhere around 85.9 billion metric tons. No reduction. Still, it's increasing. Though we are uh, sitting on this globe, uh, what you call the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, still the things are happening. Why? There's no any other reason our consumption patterns. Our consumption patterns are the major reasons. But I think <coughs> the COVID-19 has given a kind of a indication or a kind of a, uh, indicative point. The pandemic offers an opportunity to develop recovery plans that build, our, build a more sustainable future. From 2017 to 2019, 79 countries and the European Union reported at least one policy to promote sustainable consumption and production. Not the other way. Not the sustainable production and consumption, but sustainable consumption and production. So we are in front of this decoupling challenge. What is it? What we were with is basically uh, the coupled impact. The quality of life is improving. Economic growth always we are uh, preaching and we are trying to plan for economic growth. And the meantime, parallelly, the environmental impacts also keep on increasing. Can we take the challenge of decoupling the quality of life and economic growth from the environmental impact. So that's the point we are going to address through sustainable consumption and production. Economic growth, quality of life is improving, and how we can decouple these three factors. So this is something what we are going to uh, uh, share with you all through the CP. One, <coughs> one coin could be, or a one side of the coin of sustainability could be changes on production patterns. We can change our production patterns through the resource efficient cleaner production approaches. But if the consumption patterns are improving, no point. So therefore, there should be changes in production and consumption patterns together will be the best way to address this issue. I'm sure that I don't want to <coughs> go through the, the in detail about the uh, sustainable development goals through the Paris Agreement, which we agreed to perform certain things, certain areas. 17 uh, goals. Out of the 17 goals, goal number 12, which was the very interesting one, ensures sustainable consumption and production patterns through responsible consumption and production. So that is the target or the challenge we are going to undertake. It's very in simple term, doing more with less. What is less with less resources? And increasing net welfare gains from economic activities by reducing resource use, para, uh, you know, <coughs> degradation and pollution 
along the whole life cycle of communities while increasing the quality of life. I'm not going to say devote, give out the, uh, the uh, increasing quality of life, but of course there are limitations. And then it also requires a system approach and cooperation among all actors, all stakeholders, all communities, as what we are uh, trying to do today, today. Engineering communities and medical communities and maybe legal communities, everybody has to get together. Operating in the li uh, supply chain from producer to final, final consumer. So this is basically the concept, which was defined by the United Nations Environmental Program. SCP, or the Sustainable Consumption and Production, is a holistic approach to minimize the negative environmental impact, including major three, climate change, biodiversity, and uh, the, uh, <coughs> the, the plastic pollution consumption and production systems while promoting the quality of life for all. So this is how the UNEP has given the basic definition. And also the beauty of this one is the SDG is looking from SCP perspective. Even goal number two, zero hunger, goal number seven, uh, affordable and clean energy, and goal number nine, goal number 11, and goal number 13, especially the climate action, all these are in interconnected with this goal number 12. So therefore, it has a very important role which we can uh, talk about. Coming to our subject, equipment, medical equipment. Equipment are a mixture of natural resources. You can, cannot deny that whether it is a MRI scanner or a thermometer or a BP apparator, whatever it is. It is a ball of uh, natural resources amalgamated together with some kind of a program to achieve some kind of uh, objective. But there is something missing in this definition. Equipment are a mixture of limited natural resources. There are no unlimited natural resources in this world except one, that is solar energy. That also has a limitation, because when the deuterium and tritium uh, resources in sun decayed and finished off, that's the end of the, the total, uh, the solar system as well. Still, the science, scientists, they are saying maybe about another 40 million, 44, 44 million years will be there. Maybe happy. Unless otherwise, if there is no any, any other natural special catastrophes. And then again, <coughs> I would like to give you a different perspective. Typical resource utilization cascade, that is basically, some people might say this is basically the life cycle. Yes. The life cycle, I have put it into a different form, uh, saying the resource, starting from resource extraction, refining, designing, manufacturing, trading, and in between there is a kind of a marching, and then use or the consumption, and finally disposal. Basically, this is called this has two sides, that is the upstream side, basically the production side, and the downstream side, where is basically the consumption side, where we are sitting on. And then, this is not the complete picture of it, because this includes some, needs to be included some energy sources, water, chemical, various other inputs as well, but I have not uh, mentioned it there because of the uh, Simplicity of this one. And then application of SCP to typical resource utilization cascade or this particular uh, life cycle. 
what we are focusing is mainly is using and consumption uh, platform. If we can have a good preventive and operational maintenance plan, including calibration with high reliability and equipment life. That's how what we are, that's what we are going to pr uh, start today. In the meantime, we should not end up with this, uh, the use phase or the consumption phase. The end of the life, proper disposal aiming the circular economy in the world. Because circular economy is the only solution to prevent resource wastage. As I mentioned earlier, resources are limited, so therefore we have to be very concerned. It is not only that, even the consumer community, stakeholders, us, we can take one more step further. Even we can address the, the upstream side by procurement planning, or very specifically I would say, sustainable procurement planning with sustainable or green procurement principles and guidelines, which are available for Sri Lanka as well. The higher sustainability through best equipment maintenance at end user level, best equipment maintenance, including planning, performing, performance monitoring, and continual improvement, basically we say it's as PDCA cycle, means sustainable consumption. The good preventive and operational maintenance plans, including calibration with high reliability and equipment lifetime. The added sustainable consumption value with circular economic approach to complete the holistic picture. End of life, proper disposal and circular and circular economy, circularity and circular economy. So this should be something which we have to very strongly develop, a framework to be developed and keep for the future generation, offer for the future generation. Otherwise, what we are doing is totally a, a failure. And then stimulating the sustainable production, as I showed in my previous slide, procurement planning with sustainable and green procurement principles and guidelines. What we can offer to the medical equipment preventive maintenance? Of course, we have to think about a very holistic plan. Uh, the regular inspection, cleaning and servicing of medical equipment to ensure that they are in good condition and can perform their intended function correctly. All of us have to get together for this particular case. The importance of preventive maintenance is to ensure the safety and the effectiveness of the medical equipment, as well as to improve the operational efficiency and effectiveness. It's not only the efficiency, but again the effectiveness as well of healthcare facilities. An enterprise assessment management system, so EAMs, now available, automated systems, which we can think about it. A future pre preventive maintenance is likely to involve increased analysis and the artificial intelligence, AI systems. Why not to think about the total healthcare facility productive enhancer, productivity enhancers, enhancement system throughout the country? to develop total healthcare facility productivity enhancement system and achieving the best level of productivity. And then the equipment maintenance will be only a part of it. What way, way forward we can think about, what we can uh, think for the future. In short term, hiring of engineering students, as uh, engineer uh, Nihal mentioned, Hiring of engineering students for their on-the-job training to hospitals. And then uh, engineering and medical combined research programs on the subject of 
subject and broad perspective rather than they are living on different two uh, compartments or the and then technical guidelines operational and maintenance manuals for medical equipments and at user end user level supporting uh, uh, staff training including maybe nurses maybe other communities and very strongly i would like to propose quality management and quality assurance approaches a very effective systems like iso 9000 management systems and in long term stock, stock taking in uh, taking and necessary studies in uh, in the country national policy and action plan of course there are partly those are available only one, what we have to do is we have to make some uh, studies to amalgamate some of those national project plan to initiate the initial part first and then we can ask for the donor assistance because like the organizations like who very rich, very rich organization definitely if you are coming up with a very concrete plan to achieve something in the country definitely the funding will be available public private partnership it's up to us to decide this is what i can share with you all within this short period thank you very much for your kind patronage and let's discuss later if there are any clarification thank you very much thank you thank you engineer nimal perera for this uh, comprehensive presentation and thank you for highlighting the uh, three facts i think uh, quality of life economic growth and the environmental impact thank you for highlighting the uh, relationship between these three and your suggestions in the way forward i think uh, we have the topmost uh, medical administrators here with us uh, uh, in this forum i think uh, your uh, suggestions for the uh, way forward i think we can also look into these suggestions uh, in the future as well so to move on uh, our next speaker uh, dr sudat kirti dharmaratna who is the uh, deputy director general laboratory uh, services of the ministry of health he is a board certified consultant in medical administration and an examiner a trainer for msc and md in medical ad administration programs of the post graduate institute of uh, medicine in university of colombo he is a member of the board of study in medical administration at the pgim2 uh, he is the secretary to the national transplant advisory committee national laboratory advisory committee and national advisory committee on antimicrobial resistance and he has been in the forefront of uh, maintaining uh, laboratories amidst all the challenges that has posed during this economic crisis dr sudha dharmaratna sir the podium is yours and he will be uh, discussing about the abc of medical equipment manager management sir Good morning, uh, Dr. Vidya Ratna, President of the SLMA, and all the engineers and the participants. 
first let me thank the college pre the president of the SLMA for selecting this highly relevant topic to discuss and asking us to collaborate this session as understand the college of medical administrators administrators have a big role to play in relation to medical equipment management and also i listened to engineer nimal perra's lecture he has uh, described the the macro level uh, the areas how to ensure sustainable consumption and production i think very highly relevant topic and also with your short term recommendations we fully agree our college is fully agree with your short term recommendations so let me discuss this area in relation to uh, our hospital sector is not not maybe the macro level but this is very practical and uh, i am sharing my experience when i assumed duties as medical superintendent at gampa hospital in 2007 2007 i noticed that a lot of equipments are idling broken down not utilized fully that uh, made me to explore that area i searched literatures and i did some studies and publications and learned these thing and then then we taught to the our pg trainees as well so i will like to share my experiences uh, with the all the uh, the participants participants in the forum because i think it is very useful uh, to improve our medical equipment management is no doubt that we are all now we are in a um, technological transition is one of the major concerns today not only demographic transition and not only uh, the epidemiological transition the technical transition is very important for a manager to take the key decisions but when you uh, when you acquire these uh, very advanced technologies in definitely it will create some issues as well in relation to uh our maintenance and the cost so this is the we have to thought the our concern and if you discuss the the, the general concerns the medical and labor equipments are widely mismanaged all resources all over the world that there is a research evidence because they are expensive and also needs needs replacement with advanced technologies because technologies are always uh, evolving and technology we may be obsolete then you have to uh, go for new technologies purchasing of this equipment requires significant capital investment and also need substantial recurrent budget for the maintenance supply of consumer reagents and this during during this economic downturn there's one of the challenge and also requesting medical and laboratory equipment should be done rationally with proper need assessment at a user level when a hospital or somebody or user end user asking requirement equipment so there should be a rational justification unless otherwise we can invest money to buy unnecessary equipments and analyzers etc and also the understand the concepts related to medical equipment and health technology management cycle will also very helpful to in making rational decisions because first i think basic we have to have a basic understanding about the concepts unless otherwise we can improve our practice so i will define some basic concepts in my next few slides there are some concepts you have to know reliability maintainability then equipment availability utilization preventive maintenance corrective maintenance down time measurement of how to measure equipment availability and the other classification of equipment availability i think this our management level in you know, a senior management level as middle level management level when low level management should know these areas the reliability of equipment is the is, is we can describe as a character of design of the equipment which results in the durability of the item it is the capability of the equipment to work well and work when never called upon to do the job for which is designed such equipment is said to be reliable for example if you are buying a vehicle then you have to think about the reliability aspect the vehicle should be reliable reliability means able to trust it and also it indicates the probability that equipment would not fail in the long run so there's indicator the mean time between failure is the reliability indicator if there are less breakdowns the equipment is more reliable then we will consider other th aspect is the maintainability maintainability is defined as the probability that an equipment will will be restored to a certain specific conditions within a given period 
when maintenance done with prescribed procedures and resources. It indicates the probability that an equipment is successfully restored after the failure. For example, if you are buying a reliable equipment, but if you cannot, if you are unable to ma maintain it, then what's the point of buying a reliable equipment? So maintainability is also a very important area. If you, if you decide to buy a vehicle, you have to consider whether it is maintainable. That is another important aspect. So you have to measure that is a, as an indicator, is the mean time taken for repair. And that's why we are entering into service agreement, because it's a pivotal, because uh, you should have a proper maintenance for the, all the medical equipments. So either it could be either full, or that means include spares and labor, as well as partial labor only. Then why we are discussing equipment availability? It's not the number of equipment available. It's a different con concept. It is argued that if one considers both reliability, that means probability of that equipment will not fail, and the maintainability, the probability that an equipment is success successfully restored after a failure, then additional metric is needed for probability that an equipment can be operational at a given time. This metric is availability, and it is described as a performance criterion for equipment that accounts for both reliability and maintenance of the equipment. Basically, it indicates readiness for use. That's the most important thing. If you are hospital administrators, hospital directors, the nurses, everybody, our doctor, they know it. They want the equipment available and ready for use at any time in order to utilize the equipment. So this also illustrates, you can see, uh, reliability, maintainability. Then there's additional matrix needed that is called equipment availability. Right? That is we are, the, our main focus is today. Equipment availability, uh, there are many causes which hinder the availability of the equipment. Examples are frequent breakdowns, delays in repairs, non to the operator staffs. Therefore, availability has considered as a performance measure and shows the effectiveness of the maintenance as a logistic support of the system in which equipment operates. So equipment availability is a global concern. These are the research findings. In 1994, it was uh, revealed that only 20 to 50 were functional in developing countries, equipment availability. In one study that did in Nepal, about 39 were functional in selected district hospital in Nepal. And 64 were functional in district hospital Haryana, India. And equipment availability was 57 in selected base. I did my for MD dissertation uh, thesis. This was the finding, my finding. And also I measured the various also downtime myself. Each year the major share of hospital cost about maybe 5 to 15 annually is allocated to purchase of medical equipment. So you can understand the, 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 the worth of studying medical equipment and um, put the right practice in the right place. So basically, I have to give the simple basics as well because sometimes our participants may not, may, may not be able to understand what is uptime and downtime. So when you get an equipment, uptime is a time in which an equipment may be operational. Downtime is a time in which equipment cannot be operational. So there are consequences are there. When the equipment is delivered to your hospital and it is inst installed and commissioned, then you are starting and you, you are using the equipment. Then there may be uptimes and downtimes. There are a series of uptimes and downtimes. So these are the basic uh, the, the concept of the uptime, the uptime and the downtime. Then somebody asked, what is the difference between idle time and the downtime? There's another one, one is idle time and the downtime. Idle time is the time during which an asset is waiting to run or is not scheduled to run. So for example, the equipment has been delivered to the hospital but not commissioned it. So that is equipment idling in the hospital. And also non-productive time of employees due to lack of demand or unforeseen work stoppage. Sometimes uh, maybe after hours after 8 o'clock. You are not planned to do uh, the work done from them, so the equipment is idling after the after maybe after eight, uh, 8 p.m. in the night. But downtime is different. Downtime is uh, when an asset is incapable of performing its function, either due to uh, an unplanned outages or maybe planned planned plan maintenance downtime. So take place when work simply can't be done. So there may be unplanned outages, and I will be planned maintenance downtime. I will describe in detail in next few slides. So downtime is described as a length of time and equipment cannot be operational during plan or target hours of operation. 
So there are these are the source of downtime. Planned downtime losses are maybe shift rate changes, lunch break, lunch breaks, maintenance shutdowns are considered planned. Unplanned downtime losses, uh, accumulated breakdowns, non availability of the operator staffs, lack of consumables, reagents, power outages, breakdown of air conditioning facilities, these are unplanned downtimes. So we can't, very difficult to prevent the planned downtime losses, but we can prevent the unplanned downtime losses. So comparison of downtime, if you take a vehicle, no driver, inadequate fuel, need to replace battery, there's a default brake, brake, brake system. So these are the downtime causes. And in relation to medical equipment, no operator staff, lack of reagents, reagents and consumables, delayed preventive maintenance, and delayed repairs, these are the causes of downtime. Then how to measure the equipment availability? I'm, I, again, I mentioned it's not the number of equipment, equipment in, available in the organization. This indicates whether the equipment is ready for use. So therefore, there is a formula, availability is generally defined as a ratio of available hours to target hours of the operation of equipment. So you have to first decide the available hours, then you have to minus downtime, multiply 100, divide by available hours, it gives the equipment availability. How to ensure the equipment availability? You can see the first car is not ready for use as there is no driver, no fuel, no battery, dead default brake system. The car is ready with use of a driver, adequate fuel, with replacement, new battery, repaired high brake system. So the car is ready for use. That, that is the must. All the hospitals should uh, make, uh, make their equipment available and make this ready for use at any time. But utilization different, different, different factor. The utilization, we have to think of different thing. Utilization of equipment is defined as ratio of operating hours to available hours. Suppose now equipment is available, ready for use for eight hours, but we can utilize for only eight hours because there, there is no patient demands. There are no patients sometimes. For example, for example, uh, in an ETU, there should be a defibrillator. It should be made available and ready for use at all 24 seven. Because when there's cardiac patients comes, it should be tested and should be made available. It should be ready for use. But you utilize only when there is a patient who have a ventricular tachycardia or some other cardiac arrest or something, then only the equipment can be utilized. That is why we ask the nurse of the section at ETU, monitor the equipment availability every day in the morning using a checklist. Because it's our prime duty to make the equipment available. Then only we can use this equipment. Because we are always working with the lives of the patients. We want to save the life of the patients. So this is a formula for utilization and production plan. Capacity utilization is equal to operating hours divided by available hours multiplied 100. So equipment availability or readiness for use is a pre-requirement for utilization of equipment. So you have to keep monitor whether it's ready for use on a daily basis. That the hospital director should entrust to the maybe the ICU, maybe a lot of equipment are there in ICU, theater, in the laboratory, in the X-ray department, so and so forth, ETUs. So you have to every day morning you have to check whether yeah, these equipments are ready for use. And now we like about preventive maintenance as well. Preventive maintenance is basically a proactive measure. Right? The care and servicing by personnel is for the purpose of maintaining equipment in satisfactory operating conditions by providing systematic inspection, detection, and correction in civilian failures, either before they occur or before they develop into major defects. The work carried out to avoid this breakdown or malfunction. What PM activities do you do, you do for your vehicle? You know, proactively, you have to do some pre plan preventive maintenance. So you have to change oil, engine oil, maybe in 5,000 kilometers. You have to change your uh, air filter, maybe in 10,000 kilometers. So likewise, the preventive maintenance is very important. It will prevent the correct, it will delay the corrective maintenance. So that is the proactive measure we have to first think about the how to improve the preventive maintenance. It is a regular and routine action taken on equipment in order to prevent the break, its breakdown. Include test measurements, adjustment, part replacements, and as cleaning, performed specifically to prevent occurring falls. Calibration is one of the important preventive uh, maintenance measure for some of the equipment, 
when the quality control tests are not satisfactory, for example, laboratory, you start the day with the quality controls, but these are not satisfactory, then you have to do the calibration of the analysis. And also after the warranty period, user organization has to enter the, into such service agreement, agreements with the supply of the equipment, as I mentioned, to in order to align the preventive maintenance in organizations. Then corrective maintenance is a reactive measure. The task for them to identify, isolate, and rectify that fault so that failed equipment machine or system can be restored to operational condition within a given time. Maintenance which is carried out after failure detection is, uh, is aimed at restoring an asset to a condition in which it gets form it is, it is intended function. So corrective maintenance is simply a repair process. You are doing the repair. When there's a breakdown, you have to do the corrective maintenance. Then there are some classification availability that's, uh, I think, useful for hospital administrators, especially. The availability measures are calculated based on our interest. If our prime interest is about time interval, we can calculate instant availability. If you want to find out the source of downtime, there are some other measures. The instant availability is the probability of our equipment can be operational at any random time. If the mechanism of downtime is a primary concern, for example, the director and laboratory consultant want to find out the source of downtime, what is the problem issue? So then you can calculate inherent availability. So that is because that is determined only by the corrective maintenance of downtime. I will just start with the case study, case study as well to explain these uh, classifications in more detail. And issue availability is determined by both corrective and preventive maintenance downtime. Then operational availability accounts includes all sources of downtime. So you can measure operational downtime as well. So we go through the first case study. The district general hospital has, uh, has three hematology analyzers in laboratory. These should be ready for uh, use for the round the clock. The director has inspected the laboratory with the consultant hematologist, and it was found out found two out of three analyzers are functional and ready for use. The cross section snapshot view. In the first particular instance, the calculated instance availability is three out of two. That means 66%. That's, that's a measure of instance availability, instant availability. Right? The hospital director, maybe a consultant, maybe uh, the sister in charge can go to the relevant section, maybe ICU, go and see whether how many ventilators are functioning, how many uh, multi-parameters are functioning. This is a very good indicator to identify the functionality of the non-functional equipment. The next day, among these two function analyzers, one is not available for use due to following reasons. So one analyzer, in detail we are analyzing. There is a down, a force downtime loss due to breakdown. Then you can include only this corrective maintenance downtime loss and calculate in inherent availability. 24 minus 4 divided by 24, 83% is equal to available because you can't achieve 100% because there is a corrective maintenance downtime loss for hours. And plan preventive maintenance. Maybe some kind of services, service, servicing has been done. So it lost is two hours. The achieve availability you include both preventive maintenance as well as corrective and downtime. So, so 24 minus 4 plus 2 divided by 24 is 75%. Then operational availability. Operational availability, then um, you have to include all the sources of downtime. One thing is operator now non availability. Operator is not there available. She has taken a short leave or something like that. So one hour has lost. And lack of reagents and consumers are not there for four hours. So another loss. And there's a maybe a power field, another loss. So altogether there are six hours lost due to other sources of downtime. So when you calculate operational availability, so twenty four minus twelve hours total. So you see the Q available is fifty percent of the particular analyzer. So these are very important, to, I think, to identify the various sources of downtime and take measures appropriately. So I will just touch this health category management cycle. It's very important for a uh, healthcare, any medical leader. Right? There are nine steps that are there. I will still nine steps and conclude my uh, uh, presentations. Why planning and assessment is very important? Because, I, as I mentioned, the healthcare equipments are very costly. So, you have to know how to prioritize the equipment. 
it also should be done by participatory manner, participatory manner. For example, a, a medical superintendent of a hospital can have a meeting with the, the, all the consultants, with the surgical pharmacists, as pharmacists and other environmental engineers, and etc. You decide what is your priority equipment before purchasing. And also, with, it should be a transparent manner, because sometimes the, the MS of hospital prepares some their priorities, but it will change in the RD level. It goes to the PD level, it will be whole, completely maybe change. That should not happen, right? So, his greatest advice is to prepare a master program plan with all the stakeholders. And budgeting and finance was very important because every year we have to prepare budget, capital budget estimate for next year plan. Unless you prepare rational capital budget estimate, you won't be able to get next year allocations properly. So, financing, budgeting and finance is another very important area. And technology assessment and selection, the selection and allocation of medical equipment should be appropriate and in line with the actual needs of the medical centers, clinical goals, human resources, and conditions required to ensure safety. That's very important. If you don't have a space, don't buy that equipment. You know, where you can't keep this equipment. Right? So the condition, and also record to ensure safety. If you don't have your microbiology laboratory, if you don't have autoclaves, don't buy other things, because first you have to ensure the safety, because otherwise all the, 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 the materials go, go, go to the environment. So these are the some, some kind of Towards the source, I, I would share. Right? And now, actual need of the medical hospital and clinical goals and human resource. Sometimes you are buying equipment, but you don't have you don't have medical human resource to uh, use that equipment. For example, if you are buying a chemical the high-end uh, analyzer, uh, for example, uh, chemical pathology analyzer, to a place where there is no chemical pathologist, will they be able to do hormone analysis? So. You have to think about all these things when you are before taking a purchase, purchasing this decision. And also specific diagnostic facilities by the level of the institution should be provided with the specific norms should be decided according to the expected requirement with the professional colleges and the other stakeholders. For example, there are some levels of care, as you know, the division hospital primary care level and then the uh, secondary care level, tertiary care level, and likewise, we have some levels of care. You buy equipment, with high-end equipment, we are dumping at there some, sometimes a very small hospital. Then it, will, it won't be utilized. So there should be specific diagnostic facilities as well as the norms should be available from this hospital, the district or general hospital. What, are the, what is the norm of analysis in relation to each of the sections? For example, if it is laboratory, in relation to hematology services, in relation to pathology services, chemical pathology services, as well as microbiology services, what are the must equipment you should have at district general hospital? So that kind of norms you have to prepare in consultation with all the professional colleges as well as other uh, engineers and all other stakeholders. And procurement and logistics is a very important area. It's a very big area because we can't finish at once, but I am touching these things because they're very important for the participants. A lot of our clinicians are the TEC members of this procurement process. The measures to be implemented to avoid the coordination gap between different departments after initiating the procurement. So, so procurement, there are three stages, pre-procurement stage and the procurement stage and post-procurement stage and contract administration. So I noticed that a huge coordination gap in these our uh, hospitals sometimes because the uh, the user is requesting, for example, a laboratory user is requesting this equipment should be uh, purchased. Then it goes to the uh, the different levels of hierarchy, and uh, ultimately we we given the we give I am giving the tender approval go for tender. Then after tender, then there is another de lot of delays are there in tender process. Technical evaluation there may be delays sometimes. Uh, then. You know, allocations there are uh, issuing purchasing also, there may be delay. So every manager should have a procurement time schedule. Unless other, otherwise, don't start with a procurement. If you can't finish your procurement time schedule, you should not start procurement. And logistics also is a very important aspect of supply chain management. I'm not going to touch these things, areas, a huge, huge areas, transport, movement, housing, etc. This was a very important area. So this healthcare technology management cycle, every, each and every step is very important for any healthcare manager. And how to install and commission the equipment, then you have to train the, the operator staff and their skill development. That is very important. Unless otherwise, there may be uh, breakdowns due to they are not very trained. And also operation and safety is another important area. 
maintenance and repair I have highlighted a lot of areas about maintenance and repair, how to how to done, repair processes, you have to first uh, there are resources and other process. You should have some so SOPs, for example, from the fault reporting. Then after uh, you have to inform the biomedical engineer, he has to come and visit there. Then after that he must decide whether he can do it or not. Unless otherwise he has to call quotations. You have to then they have to income in inspection. They have to give a quotation. Then they have to uh, the, the director has to go for a technical evaluation of that quotation. And the repair should be worthwhile. And they should take an addition to uh, repair and also tender documents and TC documents are very important. Then only. They must get the allocation and issue PO, and the supply organization will come and do the repair. So it's a process. So the process delays, you will never ever be able to repair. We have enough allocations, but there's a process delays. Nobody knows what is the process. That's the thing. So everybody should learn about the process, and then only we can improve the process. And decommission or disposal, another important process. I think Dr. Arjuna will highlight this area in his presentation. So my conclusion, understanding healthy attractive management is very, very important for every level of manager. And essential to maintain equipment database at uh, hospital level, regional level, national level, to make rational decisions whether we are going to re repair or to replace. If the machine is obsolete, we have to uh, we have to go over a new purchase. So we have to have data, the age of equipment and brand and model and everything you should have with a file. Equipment should be ready for use during plan and and or target hours. That means equipment availability is the most important criteria. Your equipment should be made, should be made available, and it should be ready for use. And also need to reduce unplanned downtime losses. Planned downtime losses we can't reduce. Zero if it's possible if we can go zero downtime losses. But some the plan, because we are shut, there are planned prevent main downs, so that can be prevent that cannot be prevented. Basically, at least we have try to minimize the unplanned downtime losses and need to identify the equipment which can be repaired, and also it should be worthwhile and cost-effective. So we have to take a decision with the biomedical engineers as well. For example, uh, maybe the equipment is maybe 12 years old, and the, the repair cost is 50 percent of the total value of the equipment. Are you going for a repair? You can't go for a repair, so you have to take a decision. Okay, it's no point of repairing this equipment, and better to purchase a new equipment. And also need to expedite repair process, as I mentioned, lengthy procedures, but Good coordination is very important at the hospital level. Uh, and procurement process, there's a proper coordination process, stakeholders and need management support. There's a process where they, we have to conduct some audit as well. So these are some delays. I think these can be overcome, then we can improve if we know and understand this context and these concepts. With that, I thank uh, President, uh, the SLMA, Dr. Vinaya Radna, and our college president, and Dr. Al Panapitiya for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for highlighting the important uh, concepts of healthcare technology management. And thank you for the comprehensive presentation. Our final speaker for today is uh, Dr. H.M. Arjuna Tilakaratna, who is the director of Teaching Hospital Peradeniya. He's a senior medical administrator and also the assistant secretary of College of Medical Administrators. He will be discussing about the medical equipment management in hospitals in a more practical way. So over to you. Good morning, all of you. Uh, President, uh, College of uh, SLMA, and the Secretary and the Council members, and engineers, consultants, doctors, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for giving me uh, this opportunity to share my experiences with all of you. 
So today I'm going to discuss, uh, to talk regarding the medical equipment management in hospitals. Actually, in first few slides, I would like to uh, emphasize the, the, some uh, details of medical equipment uh, management system that should be in place in these hospitals. And in uh, other part, I would like to share my experience, which I have done, uh, a gap analysis in central points uh, in uh, major hospitals uh, regarding medical equipment management system and inventory management uh, systems. So, uh, why uh, the medical equipment management uh, is very important to discuss today? So, I think this topic has already been discussed in uh, other few speakers also. Uh, I also uh, would like to um, discuss a few things. Actually, this uh, era of cost intensive medical care, uh, as uh, I think you all know, in this crisis situation, this is very important to, in Sri Lanka. Uh, this is very ex expensive medical equipment. So it is, therefore, the discussing maintenance, equipment management is very, very important. And demand for improved diagnosis facilities. So it is, uh, it is very clear. So now the diagnosis facilities have already been uh, challenging and it is improved with the new technologies. So uh, equipment management also very important with that. Uh, and sophisticated equipment with modern technology. This is also hand in hand with uh, modern technology. Uh, we got very sophisticated medical equipment. So management is very important. And spectacular uh, progress in development in surgical procedures. Not only surgical procedures, all medical procedures. Uh, now it has been already improved with the uh, new knowledge and advancement of technology. Uh, and physicians are becoming more investigation oriented. So I can very well remember in a uh, few decades back, the clinicians are more clinical oriented. But now, uh, most clin clinicians are investigation oriented and uh, the need of medical equipment and its uh, application is very, very important and management also very, very important. So patients are expecting high quality of care. So that is also other factor. There is a growing demand for quality of care in the community. And introduction of computer technology and robotic, uh, robotics in medical fields. And uh, artificial intelligence also have been introduced to medical uh, practice. So therefore, the new highly uh, sophisticated equipment has been introduced to the system. So therefore, equipment management becoming more important. And medical equipment is used for the specific purposes of diagnosis and treatment of diseases or rehabilitation. And uh, medical devices are as such that directly affect human life. That is also very important. And they are considerable, very costly equipment. And equipment management program <coughs> keep the medical equipment in a reliable, safe and Available, available for use when it is needed. So, therefore, uh, medical equipment management program is very, very important. And uh, such a program prolongs the useful life of equipment and uh, cost effectiveness also increases. Uh, the objective of equipment maintenance, I think it is uh, uh, very generally to optimize the utilization to obtain maximum return of capital investment or return of investment. So other thing is cost efficiency and cost effectiveness to get it and better utilization results in a quick break even points uh, and optimal patient handling and rapid turnover uh, and this the cost minimization and quality patient care and satisfaction and patient as well as uh, user safety. That is uh, the patient also need safety and user also need safety. So better uh, equipment management is needed to achieve these objectives. Scope of maintenance include the planning and implementation of a program of planned preventive maintenance and ensuring that all the facilities, systems and services under the scope of uh, engineering services are well maintained and kept in a state of optimum operational efficiency. And maintaining an up-to-date inventory of all the medical equipment available and their distribution on the hospital. So 
having equipment inventory is very very important in the management of medical equipment maintain up to date history sheet for each and every equipment uh, unit in the hospital that is also lacking in most of the uh, hospitals and institutions the the documentation and the log books and history sheets are very very important uh, in the management of medical equipment and anticipating the requirement of commonly required spares and arranging for their adequate stocking so that is one of a reason why we are idling or underutilize some of the medical equipment so uh, that is uh, because of the lack of medical uh, the spares uh, at the when it needed and ensuring the breakdown maintenance is prompt enough to ensure uninterrupted service so that is i think a prime need uh, to uh, op to obtain uh, zero dying time we we need a prompt uh, intervention from the system and ensuring that the facilities services come in under the high scope and safe and hazardous free so i think uh, medical equipment maintenance uh, cycle has already been discussed by dr sudarth arnathna so here also uh, the it, it is started from procurement and pre procurement uh, stages like need assessment and all and the process is there and uh, end with the condemnation condemnation so i think in uh, since we have been discussing uh, about the sustainable uh, medical equipment management so i think uh, we have to incorporate the sustainable strategies into the medical equipment management cycle in it each uh, level so i think we we uh, during um, in the uh, procurement level in the pre procurement stage when we identify needs we have to identify what are the sustainable options so we have to uh, reduce we have to try to reduce the the carbon footprint of the uh, the particular equipment uh, using particular equip equipment and we have to find most uh, low energy consumption medical equipment and uh, low low uh, less uh, consumable con consuming equipment or maybe Uh, low with low packaging or likewise there are a lot of things that we have to consider when procuring medical equipment to achieve sustainable uh, procurement management uh, medical equipment management uh, in a medical equipment maintenance system uh, there are some component that should be included so uh, those are the some of the uh, basic component uh, the one is organization there should be organization maybe In, in that within the organization there should be biomedical engineering department and there should be very comprehensive inventory and uh, selection and acquisition procedure should be in place and installation procedure should be there and uh, installation and commissioning is very very important and calibration validation uh, those are the other points and the maintenance program is a uh, one maintenance program is one component of the medical equipment management system and uh, troubleshooting systems and service and repair uh, computer software if it is available it is uh, beneficial and finally condemnation and disposal uh, so in uh, those are the when we go to the uh, component of maintenance program uh, normally maintenance can be divided into two broad groups IPM is inspection and preventive maintenance and corrective maintenance or some other uh, predictive maintenance autonomous maintenance those things come under the preventive maintenance uh, other uh, important component of the medical equipment management system is planning so uh, planning uh, we can understand in three uh, way i mean for, for the inventory wise Uh, in uh, we can uh, uh, equipment to be included into the maintenance program so in this case uh, there are some uh, technical ways and means to how to identify medical equipment uh, to be included into the maintenance system so uh, in who guidelines uh, they are uh, elaborate in that one way is uh, <coughs> calculating equipment management number so 
the equipment time management number can be calculated by uh, using few parameters. Maybe uh, those are the criticality of equipment, uh, maintainability of equipment, cost, and the likewise. So, uh, the allocating some marks to these uh, areas, we can prioritize equipment to be included into the um, medical equipment maintenance program. So, uh, in this case, we can take some uh, decisions whether we include this into the preventive maintenance uh, in a regular basis or in a, uh, the frequency. Likewise, we have to take, we can take decisions. Uh, the method includes, we have various type of uh, maintenance uh, systems. I mean, uh, we can get support from the contract with the device manufacturers or dealers or the companies directly or we can get the support from the independent service organizers or third party vendors or a combination of both or we can have our own systems so our, our own uh, technicians and engineers so we can uh, use those uh, methods uh, the, in the planning uh, uh, time we have to plan in which method are we going to use and resources also we have to plan at the first stage so financial resources manpower resources and physical resources so those should be identified uh, uh, in freehand the operational management also there are some component are included uh, the ipm frequency i think it is um, in, the, in many equipment the frequency has already been given by that company or some some expert panel also can decide what would be the frequency uh, to do this maintenance and prioritization of equipment I already discussed. There are some technical ways to identify and prioritize <coughs> and use and use errors is also very important. So uh, because the identification of uh, user and use errors, errors, we can minimize the uh, maintenance and the repairs. Another thing is we can give some feedback to the companies, the, the manufacturers to correct if there is any uh, problems in the uh, machines itself and uh, documentation part also very very important so logbooks and history sheets uh, these things has to be uh, maintained in a medical equipment management system and uh, communication with the uh, vendors with the end users and with the uh, manufacturer or the service people are very very important this very the good communication system uh, has to be placed in a good medical equipment management system and SOPs has to be developed for uh, for the use to operate the uh, machines and to repair the machines also for the service providers also there should be uh, uh, adequate uh, operation SOPs and uh, CMMS means computerized medical equipment management software that is also very important if we can have uh, that will uh, <coughs> solve um, many issues in the medical equipment management process. So, uh, performance monitoring is a uh, other part. I think it is uh, very lacking in Sri Lanka. So, we don't have any sort of performance monitoring mechanisms monitor the uh, performance of medical equipment that we are using. So, those are maybe uh, mean time between failures, the average time elapsed between failures, repeated failures, the number of failures within a specified period of time, response time means the time between request for a service and the start of a repair and repair time the time between the start and the finish of a repair downtime and delinquent work time work orders and uh, out of that there are some other uh, performance indicators like completion rate of assigned uh, uh, pm and equipment locate rate ipm yield ipm productivity equipment performance downtime uh, the availability, cost of service ratio, equipment failure rate. So actually, uh, to analyze these uh, performance indicators, uh, we need some information. So, uh, so to get those information, there should be some uh, system actually. So if we have uh, computerized management, uh, medical equipment management system, we can get uh, those inputs and we can analyze and uh, we can get these performance indicators. The other important of having performance indicators, performance indicators is to
to optimize our service. The main uh, issue, my main purpose is to optimize, optimize the uh, what we have do it. So our 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 uh, service delivery and uh, other uh, importance is we can use these uh, performance indicators in the procurement process. So uh, this is uh, which we are not actually using. So what we do is we are. Uh, we get some uh, some sort of a specification from end user or some other person then we uh, evaluate stick to that specification so if we have uh, the, the the value of some uh, performance indicators we can use them uh, in the procurement process consequences of poor maintenance include i think these uh, facts i got from the some uh, surveys done in Sri Lanka and some Southeast Asian countries. So only 50 to 60 percent of equipment are in uh, 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 usable condition. Only 50 percent, 60 percent. That means 40 to 50 percent are not usable condition. High tech equipment worth millions are lying idle in some hospitals. And common factors contributing for wastage and purchase of equipment which is never used due to lack of technical expertise to maintain and use it. I think it is we also having this sort of problems and reduce lifetime due to mishandling and lack of maintenance and repair and non-availability of spares and accessories. That is also we are having in the, these days uh, we are seriously uh, facing without uh, this problem due to lack of spares and accessories and excessive downtime due to lack of preventive maintenance. I think it is very ob obvious. So uh, now I'm going to move to my experience. So I, I did uh, uh, gap analysis a survey in the central province in a selected hospitals. So the purpose of this gap analysis was identification and categorization of available medical equipment in selected hospitals in central province and an assessment of inventory management system in selected hospitals in central province. And Assessment of existing medical equipment management system in selected hospitals in Central Province. I think uh, the equipment management system, uh, the inventory management is a component of a uh, medical equipment management system. So, so, five major hospitals have been selected for the survey, and all uh, available medical equipment were categorized according to the, the following criteria. Actually, this is one of uh, the laid down by the WHO. Uh, 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 they are booklets, so diagnostic equipment, monitoring equipment, therapeutic equipment, and miscellaneous. There are some other nomenclatures also. This is one of I found from the WHO categorization. And <coughs> in the inventory uh, management, uh, these the nine factors, nine areas I have been selected to survey. Those are the type and model of equipment, serial number of equipment, and country of origin, year of manufacture, locate date or date of acceptance, functional status, categorization in terms of function, and type of maintenance and history of change. History of change means some when time to time uh, equipment uh, transfer to some one unit to one unit. So these changes has to be written in the inventory. Uh, in assessment of existing system of medical equipment program, uh, I have gone through uh, 23 parameters, I mean, uh, those are the uh, component or areas that should be included in a uh, comprehensive medical equipment management system. So uh, I will read out then a little bit fast. Uh, the availability of preventive maintenance policy in black and white, identification of manpower that require in every stages of the program, written guideline and protocols, comprehensive inventory management program, equipment prioritization, medical equipment installation and final acceptance, management scheduling and setting IPM frequency, record keeping methods, tagging and labeling, communication methods for effective communication, system for detecting use error and use error, monitoring tool to supervise plan maintenance, performance evaluation methods and techniques, calculation of performance indicators, training conducted for users and technical personnel during last year, any commendation given to users or technical personnel for better performance work with regard to equipment maintenance, management, safety checkups done by technical personnel during last year, quality assessment in equipment management, 
methods, tools, and techniques used to ensure continuous supply of spare parts, storing of equipment, and dispatch, methods and systems to ensure adequate financing, condemnation of old and, uh, condemnation of old and obsolete equipment, availability of procedure templates. Those are uh, the things that should be included in the comprehensive medical equipment management system. So, uh, to analyze, uh, to understand gap analysis, I have uh, introduced uh, a color code. So, uh, I think this is a little bit complicated and uh, too, too easy for all you, for you all, for you all, you, you all to understand this. So, I think we got only the, the, set, uh, the red, yellow, and green. So we don't have gray and blue. So, in uh, red means those uh, component are completed up to uh, 20 to 35. Uh, the yellow means. Uh, completed up to the 35 to 50, the average, and green means these components are completed up to the 50 to 75. This is result of cap analysis of inventory management. So, how uh, varies these uh, hospitals? I have selected <coughs> five hospitals, base hospital Teldenia, teaching hospital Peradenia, teaching hospital Gampala, district general hospital Matale, and district general hospital Nawalapitiya, uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, you can s see uh, the main, uh, I, I will describe uh, some of the main points only. So, I think type and model of equipment, equipment uh, mentioned is, I think, average, uh, above average satisfied in all the, all the hospital. But <coughs> serial number of, uh, of the equipment, is highly dissatisfactory. It is not mentioned in the inventories. And country of origin has mentioned in many hospitals. And locate date and uh, the date of acceptance, uh, functional status, and categorization in terms of function and type of maintenance is highly dissatisfactory. That means less than 35 completed. And history of change has also not written in an uh, acceptable manner. And year of manufacture is satisfactory. There is the uh, uh, results of the inventory management system. In the medical equipment uh, management system, uh, so there are a lot of variables. So availability and preventive maintenance policy in black and white, it is highly dis dissatisfactory. And identification of a manpower that required in every stage uh, is above average, I think. And written guidelines and protocols uh, also problem. And comprehensive inventory management program uh, is some above average. And equipment prioritization is no, they are not doing it. And medical equipment installation and final acceptance is some hospital are doing. Management scheduling and uh, setting IPM frequency, some hospital doing. Record keeping methods, poor, some hospital are doing. Tagging and labeling, some hospital are doing. Communication methods for effective communication, uh, some hospital has. But system for detecting user and user, no, they don't have the dissatisfactory. Monitoring tool to prevent uh, plan maintenance, some are in average. So, Performance evaluation methods and techniques, uh, no, dissatisfactory. Calculation of performance indicators, dissatisfactory. Training conducted for users and the technical staff, uh, average in many hospitals. Any com common, uh, commendation, no, dissatisfactory. Uh, safety checkup done by technical personnel during year, uh, that is also uh, dissatisfactory in many hospitals. Quality assessment in equipment management, <coughs> it's also average only two hospitals. Methods, tools, techniques used to uh, ensure continuous supply of spare parts and uh, storing equipment and dispatch, that is average few hospitals. And methods and systems ensure adequate financing, uh, that is also we don't have actually that sort of a system, but this satisfactory. Condemnation of all and obsolete equipment, that is there. So we are doing condemnation better. Availability of uh, product templates, that is also uh, only one hospital has in average level. So I think 
identified gaps i think uh, i am not going to read out all these things i think uh, the model of equipment found uh, not very clear the model is not very clear serial number not mentioned in 30% of cases serial number means serial number of a particular equipment country of origin date or dates of acceptance was not very clear functional status not mentioned categorization in terms of function no Uh, types of maintenance history of change has been written but not in a systematic manner identification of manpower that require in many, uh, every stage of program uh, is some is problem in many, many hospitals written guidelines protocols no equipment prioritization no medical equipment installation final acceptance no uh, management scheduling and setting up ipm frequency also poor record keeping methods also uh, poor tagging and labeling also poor communication with the effective communication there is also lacking uh, <coughs> so there are a lot of gaps we have identified in this uh, survey so uh, with this uh, gaps uh, i have made some recommendations to improve the system so uh, i will read out these recommendations all medical equipment should be categorized in terms of their function Uh, as diagnosis therapy monitoring or others so whatever the, there should be some categorization of, of of the equipment the vital information of medical equipment should be included into the inventory management system such as serial number date make of manufacture date uh, acceptance uh, commission in function in uh, those things has to be included and details of preventive maintenance including scheduling and ipm frequency should be incorporated into the system and deto- details of corrective maintenance including invoicing billing ordering and spare parts should be included and facility to retrieve uh, mobilization history of each equipment should be included into the system and system should be capable to identify required manpower in every stage of the program that is very very important because without uh, technician we can't uh, get the repair done so therefore uh, this manpower has to be identified first the monitoring and safety checkup mechanism should be incorporated and performance indicators and quality indicators should be monitored periodically and you keep on prioritization method should be added uh, to include into the maintenance program the facility to communicate effectively with the users and vendors should be included in many hospitals there is no facility to inform the that their ma- machine is broken so we strongly believe so other thing is with all these uh, facts so the we, we we got some impression that this many of these problems can be solved by uh, introducing uh, computerized medical equipment management software system into the system so uh, as a result uh, in the primary psp project the world bank there you know there is a project called psp it is funded by world bank so i uh, made a proposal to them in uh, the small grant uh, uh, project so they have accepted it then and then uh, we are in the process of developing medical equipment management software to the system so these are the uh, modules which we have Uh, <coughs> develop so far so uh, at the moment we have completed 80% of this software development process i think in near future we can introduce it into the system so those are the some of the uh, i think activities included into this software so i am not going to describe those things uh, so outcome of the project i think uh, project means outcome of the this computerized uh, system introduction is we we have complete user requirement specification at the time at the moment and we have comprehensive srs document now and uh, computerized maintenance management software uh, we can develop with this project and strategy to implementation of cmm web using available resources i think it is very very important do we have sort of a I mean uh, equipment uh, soft, software we have to use it with the existing system with the existing people and with the existing resources so we have to have a strategy to implement this system and uh, comprehensive at, at the end 
uh, we hope we will have a comprehensive medical equipment management system with central coordination at any level. So these are the points that uh, I want to discuss. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you for highlighting these issues uh, within the hospitals and very interesting uh, results from your survey as well. I think uh, we can find some solutions uh, for these problems uh, within the forum today itself, some of the ideas for solutions. And now we will open the forum for the uh, questions. Uh, if uh, any questions from the physical participants as well as uh, from the online participants, you can direct to our expert panel now. Uh, <laughs> let me start uh, until the others uh, prepare for questions. Firstly, thank you very much for those excellent presentations. Uh, so, the, uh, as it was explained at the beginning, we want to find solutions. I think uh, that's, that's the intention. Uh, College of Medical Administrators and SLMA, uh, and also the uh, Sustainable Consumption and, uh, and uh, Production uh, Forum as well. Uh, now, uh, there have been definitely there are gaps, and it's uh, evident that only 50 to 60 percent of the equipment are functioning at the moment. It's a major, I think it's, a, it's an emergency. Uh, so, is there any way that uh, we can find uh, practical solutions at the moment? Can uh, the professional organizations like SCP and also the uh, IESL? Can they contribute in any way? Can there be additional resources mobilized without, because there's a financial problem, you can't get, you know. Uh, is it possible? That's my uh, first question. Uh, and the other one is that uh, now this, uh, with regard to preventive maintenance, uh, the, uh, the what, we, what was presented by the, uh, Mr. Nihal Kure and also Mr. Nalin, uh, is that the uh, the preventive maintenance side because that if that is emphasized more and then uh, that it's a shared responsibility and I'm sure there are many people who are listening uh, online now um, can can there be a way that we can uh, educate or do something to uh, get that consciousness that I'm responsible also so that this machine doesn't uh, break down. And there are some very serious new issues coming up, for example, connected to uh, uh, what um, uh, engineer Nalin uh, uh, said. Now, mercury, uh, mercury poisoning is becoming a big problem. Now, I think still about 60, 70% of our uh, sphygmanometers, sphygmanometers are uh, this aneroid uh, mercury mercurial ones, not the digital ones. So uh, the disposal and you know, because most of these uh, ones you can't use after some time. And uh, so such problems we need to address. So probably we can't do uh, address everything immediately, but at least if we can make a start, so how can we get the uh, assistance of other professionals who are willing to contribute voluntarily to uh, meet these gaps? Is it possible? Uh, secondly, can we uh, give uh, uh, some education and you know, at least get people to think that about preventive maintenance and those some of the urgent other issues that are coming out of disposal of equipment. Thank you. Thank you. To answer uh, your first question, now uh, I agree that about 50, 50 to 60 percent uh, equipment are functional. So we are seeing the end result. Now that is the outcome we see. The root cause is somewhere else, right? Because now, if we, in the, from the need assessment, from the procurement planning, we have to decide to purchase strike equipment and put in the right place. And also with solid, concrete maintenance programs. Unless we buy uh, equipment in ad hoc manner, uh, and then uh, very difficult to uh, do the corrective maintenance and the preventive maintenance as well as ultimately, they will, they will be underutilized due to some, some other reasons. For example, another thing is if you want to improve corrective maintenance, there are some measures to do. Right? That is basically you have to identify high reliable equipment and get the, get the good equipment uh, and also 
the equipment should be maintainable, integrated with service agreement. Likewise, you have to take appropriate measures from the planning stage as well. Before, right, before we have to think about, I think the basic important thing is, as engineer Imalpara mentioned, now we are in this economic downturn. So using TR, three, three R concepts, basically think about to repair and reuse. It's a very cost-effective strategy. Now existing, I think, short-term measure, we have to reuse by repairing and uh, repairing and reusing these machines. For that, we should have equipment database where these are there. We have to identify the equipment which need to repair. And the short-term measure, if the if you can identify, we don't have a proper equipment database. That's the issue. Right? Developing equipment database is not a simple thing because I, I think most of the engineers will agree with me. Nomenclature issues are there. So you should have nomenclature issues as well. Uh, our DG Biomedical Engineer also trying to develop some nomenclature and identify the models, brand names, etc., etc. So categorize this equipment and have a database. Then uh, if you have a proper database, then we can take a lot of decision to take repair decisions or to, to or either replace and to, to new document decisions. Then after that, you have to either write to equipment appropriate, appropriate technology. Our country can afford with good service agreement, service support. Unless otherwise, we can't maintain preventive maintenance. The prevention is better than cure. So likewise, the, what has happened in the past, now we have to think very critically, and we have to take some appropriate measures, or at least it takes about three years, but there should be, I, I suggest to have a collective approach. Because in the professional organization of biomedical department and the medical administrators and other uh, the engineering societies, so that collectively we have to work it out, understand the root causes. Without in the root causes, now we have to identify, without the problem, we have to identify solutions. So that we have to do some uh, process mapping and each end process mapping. If you get the procurement, this is a very big process. Is there? Every delays in these processes are there. You can not know the right specifications. Also, will lead to unnecessary uh, purchase of machines. So, likewise, there are so many root causes. So, I recommend to have that kind of committee and collaborative approach and work uh, in a uh, some uh, kind of uh, uh, futuristic manner. In a futuristic manner, we can. Uh, develop a, such a system, it may maybe take about two to three years. Even with that, I think uh, better late than never. Uh, this is uh, the question is to you. Okay. Uh, this is actually first I would uh, direct uh, my attention to, uh, I'm from ISL, so to uh, President Dr. Vinya, right? If being pre representing ISL, if I don't highlight this one, it's a uh, it's not good. If you see on the fan, you had fixed fix a LED light, LED light on the top of the, the top fan. Of the fan. <laughs> so I, I think it, it is not a proper thing. Uh, this is how uh, in most of the places the things happen, right? Please don't do it. It, it is not <laughs> appropriate and it, it's something uh, violates all the principles, right? The second thing is uh, I had uh, going through the two presentations given by two doctors. It's like, I felt. What I felt, I'm not, uh, uh, with due respects, I'm telling you, right? It's like, I being an engineer trying to uh, describe the acute stroke, right? I felt that way when, when the maintenance systems were discussed, right? Because right now the maintenance systems are much more developed. We, are, we go for non-destructive testing, right? We have a lot of monitoring mechanism on the way, uh, on the equipment, how to uh, identify the needs for maintenance much earlier, right? Even uh, Dr. Uh, Arjuna was mentioning CMMS. I think it's based on SAP you are talking about, no? Is it based on SAP? SAP, SAP? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's SAP, CMMS, no? So basically, uh, right, the current maintenance system, because we, we were talking about uptime, downtime, but, but uh, basically when we have the, uh, we called it redundancy. We have the redundancy. When we have redundancy, we can easily go for zero maintenance, zero downtime, right? So there are way of planning the maintenance equipment. Those things need to come into the system, right? So. Uh, so those are the main factors we have to consider in medical system 
how we plan uh, uh, reliable equipment availability, right? It's not just uh, putting a formula or getting something. We have to plan how many equipment are required, uh, what would be the maintenance time, so how we can manage it. So it, it's a whole process of uh, engineering uh, evaluation, right? I, I feel we need to uh, work with uh, medical councils and the medical organization to go get those things in the initial stage. It's not you, you are just buying a one equipment to, to a hospital and then wait for the maintenance to happen. We have to plan based on your requirement, right? If you want to have 24 hour surgeries, then we have to have different philosophy, right? When you, when you, when you have planned maybe a 12 hour surgeries on your theaters, it's a different philosophy, right? So all these things are uh, different approach of planning. That's I need to highlight here. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I take a few minutes? I'm Dr. Rohini Ardenambi from Sri Lanka College, President Sri Lanka College of Microbiologists, and we are involved in uh, diagnostic as well as uh, monitoring processes of infections. Um, actually, when I listen to, uh, firstly, I have to thank uh, SLMA for timely and very valuable organize. Uh, uh, I mean, the committee and the discussion organized that at this time, and also the speakers who did uh, much, much justice to what they were allocated for. And it it would have been um, very much better if we had health economics and budgeting also under this, this discussion. It would have been another. Uh, highlighter as well as um, uh, involvement of uh, uh, ministerial uh, delegate also because the whole thing the message should go across um, so under these uh, all these topics which I gathered uh, we need a proper data before having a allocation or um, the allocating an instrument or uh, to before that we need the proper data which we are lacking so we have to have a patient ID system, national identification system, which has been discussed so much of times, but did not happen so far. So if we have real, I mean, patients are uh, either hospital shopping or doctor shopping. So one patient must be going from Chatna to Kalambu or Ampara to Kalambu or Aunia to Kalambu or even everywhere um, going along. So, so we do not do not know the actual allocation of instruments, how much of instruments are needed. So then uh, with that identification system, we will have a proper data. That's one thing. I, 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 I need to talk much, but I don't take much time on, on identification system. And then we need to have an inventory. As Dr. Arjuna Raiki mentioned, uh, the hospitals that uh, he was working, there, there, there should be a in inventory so that that inventory not only to the hospital there should be a national inventory uh, which included almost all the ministerial as well as private sector hospital uh, we need real-time data not just instru but instruments and what they do but we need real-time data monitoring system uh, because now the software are highly uh, develop. You have uh, this uh, the ISL is here. They they will know there are a lot of developed systems which we can implement without much um, costing. So the, the the instruments are distributed, but real time data is not available to see whether this is being used appropriately, whether this is being um, uh, cost effectively used or not. So if there are instruments which are underutilized the ministry should be able to mobilize them where they are used properly things like that should be done and and also um the this uh, uh, the, the empirical uh, the diagnostic uses of uh, antibiotic will uh, receive i mean consume ma major amount of budget health budgets because of lack of diagnostic services rapid diagnostic services so rather than big instruments, we can spend on rapid diagnostic to see a cost effectiveness. I mean, in a in a situation like this where we are facing a huge budgetary problems. And likewise, um, so so under maintenance, 
the major problem is uh, the people who are not trained are involved in handling instruments. That's another major area in um, uh, uh, government sector because I have government sector as well as private sector experience. So in, in private sector, instruments are looked after well and the only trained people are allowed to handle so uh, and also the those who are involved are tightly monitored then we know who broke this and if it is a carelessness we get to know but in government sector no answerability nobody is uh, really answerable to the maintenance or the instrument so we we need to do such uh, tying up things as well as only when necessary we need to take instruments um so this uh, there are a lot of things like that we have to look into. Uh, budget and financing should be very carefully assessed and allocation should be done with the need, actual need, rather than going for the sophistication alone. Uh, because the cost effectiveness means we have to, if, if olden days, if, manage, if we manage much using the clinical skills, we can use them half-half, like clinical plus instruments together to run through this bad period. And another major thing, ISO, we, we, the government sector should go for standardization. When you are in the standardization, only this instrument maintenance will happen properly. So all these, uh, the regist registration processes are well tied up with the ISO uh, uh, systems that are uh, running in a country. So we are lacking very major portions of this system uh, to run this cost effectiveness. So those are my highlights. Uh, thank you very much again for everyone. Thank you, Dr. Rahim. Thank you. I think we have a physical participant. Uh, sure, sir. <coughs> sir, from, uh, I'm Paul from my... I'm Kosala representing IESL, answering to Dr. Vinaya's first question. Yes, uh, Dr. Vinaya, this is a national uh, national task. IESL will definitely be able to help you. Uh, may not be on full-time basis, at least actually to advisory and guide. We can give the advice and guidance, uh, so we, your team actually can uh, uh, implement that one. So we will. there will be volunteers, uh, so there will be definitely volunteers to help you. So we will... Exactly, yes, yes. So we can help you. So we can discuss. Definitely we will uh, help you in that one. The second point is actually the uh, machine av uh, availability. As rightly Dr. Sudhat and Dr. Arjuna mentioned and also the participant. So we need, I mean, rather than rather than trying to find the, re uh, find the reasons for the sun in dark, we need to exactly go in a logical basis. So we need to do the root cause analysis probably 20% may be, I mean, 20 there may be 20% reason for the 80% of the failures. So we have to do a logical analysis. For that one, we need correct data. So the first thing I, I, I feel is we have to have a proper database, and we need to find out the reasons uh, and everything we have to document. So thank you. Thank you. I think uh, due to time constraints, uh, yeah, we can have another one. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. Let me introduce myself. I'm Dayaratna Silva, Executive Director from the Pathfinder Foundation. Uh, really, thank you for the invitation received through the, some of the resource persons. <coughs> uh, recently, we launched a report uh, called Medium and Long-Term Strategies to Support the Sri Lanka Economic Transformation. And we identify a number of sectors, uh, renewable energy, so on, but one of the sectors uh, we uh, identify about this skill and training and skill development. <coughs> Actually, some of the resource persons are Nimal was Nimal contributed, uh, Nihal, uh, engineer Nihal, and engineer Nimal contributed. So this, uh, why I take this flow is uh, the this report focuses on the what you call the tripartite cooperation between Japan and. India and Sri Lanka for to address the certain issues. One, training and skill development, uh, this plastic waste management, there are a number of areas. And medical equipment maintenance is one of the uh, areas that was mentioned in the report. <clears throat> so uh, we are now just not just 
lim not limit into the publication of the report. We are trying to take some collaborative effort for international cooperation. So with India, they are, we are already talking to some of the organizations, uh, think tank level and the government level. What I would request from the Sri Lanka Medical Association, uh, previous speakers mentioned, in the, even Dr. Anur Arjuna mentioned, some, only fifth, some items are uh, keep, you know, idling and not maintenance, only 50% of the equipment are uh, used. Maybe this is, there is no train or skilled people to operate them. So, could you, could you tell us uh, any suggestion from your side? Uh, identify some Indian organization or Japanese organization with whom we can connect uh, to provide training and skill development for the uh, medical staff. This is just to initiate the discussion. This is my reason I took the floor. Thank you. Now uh, we have done some surveys regarding this equipment availability. Then we identify sources of downtime. Our main problem was highlighted in my research in 2007. The main issue is the corrective maintenance of downtime. Repair. Other things are very minor downtime. For example, operator non-availability, skill or training or something, is negligible, something like that. I didn't bring my, uh, the, the findings today, but we have done research. I did research in some uh, four hospitals in Western Province, Pandura, Vatapitla, Gampa, and Navisa Vela, and different, different equipments, maybe incubators, uh, laboratory equipments, likewise, a lot of equipments. I, I prospectively measure the equipment availability, operational availability. And so that we can't capture the source of downtime. Right? That is why we need to know these concepts as well. Unless we don't know the medical fraternity, we don't know the concepts, how to measure the operational availability, then you can't give, the, give something to the audience so the, we can share the findings. Because we did, because beyond our limits, we have gone and studied this area to improve the system. Right? Then, uh, to my you answer, the, if you want to improve this downtime, so first our thing is to improve the Correct to maintain downtime as well as prevent to maintain is the most important thing. Other things, power outages and us maybe some because the AC is not available and maybe still operators are not available, we can replace them. Uh, so these are lack of concern, other thing. This is the supply chain issues. These are not very important because we can manipulate these things. But correct to maintain process and basically the prevent to maintain process, the biomedical engineers should play a big role in there. Right? These are medical doctors cannot uh, do these things because the, the process, the viable India has to play a lot of big role, right? So basically that is, um, I think, uh, I, I agree with that. Our operators are very skillful and very trained. For example, if you get a MLT, he is very trained on laboratory analysis. It's like a physiotherapist, he is very trained on the physiotherapy uh, equipment. And uh, so as other ICU ventilators, whatever, the nurses are very well because supply organizations are giving the training as well. Right. Our big issue is to improve the repair part, uh, the repairs as well as uh, have a very good sound, robust preventive mechanism system in place uh, via all the uh, facilities. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for all the, uh, the comments from different uh, perspectives. Of course, what I feel is today just an eye-opening session. This is not a platform to take a confirmed decision today. I think just we have initiated the, uh, just triggered the, uh, the, the requirement. So therefore, I think uh, we may have to go for maybe number of sessions for discussions, data collections, fact-finding, gap analysis, and everything, and then come to an agreement to go for a Con concrete plan for it, rather than immediately jumping into a uh, point. And in the, the same process, uh, uh, even I can broad down, because SCP Forum Sri Lanka is connected with the Asia Pacific Roundtable on Sustainable Consumption and Production. That is APRSCP, which I am uh, one of the um, uh, board member of APRSCP as well. <coughs> so in that case, Sometimes we may be able to get their, uh, the experiences as well. But then we are bordering, we are widening the, uh, the experiences 
which we can gather from the same Asia Pacific region as well. That includes maybe Australia and even Japan, and even the countries like uh, India, Bangladesh, and other countries also included there, Pakistan like countries included. Uh, so we can get their views as well. Unfortunately, this, uh, the flyovers, I received this one only yesterday night. So I couldn't uh, share it uh, with my APRCP colleagues. Uh, otherwise, I would have uh, shared it uh, with uh, the, my colleagues. And then we would have had a, I don't know, because at the last moment I shared it, maybe some one or two it has joined the join online. So maybe uh, in future, we can have some wider participation and get more, more and more data collection and information gathering. Uh, to your question about this Merkur issue, yes, it's a very crucial issue. Uh, but can we uh, have we have already signed for uh, Minamata Convention? Country has already signed for Minamata Convention because Minamata, as I'm sure that you know about that story, uh, so that has a value for us to think about the Minamata Convention, which I have already signed. Uh, Ministry of Environment is the uh, key stakeholder of this one. Uh, but there are a little bit of gaps, and uh, the way they are behaving, there are a lot of uh, issues. Which are, uh, this is not a platform to discuss all these things. And then uh, maybe in future, we can take those as well into our uh, discussion. And uh, we'll collectively uh, try to take some uh, directive. Thank you. Thank you. I also fully agree with the engineer Animal Perra because we have to go for as a collective approach because the, uh, this has been triggered out now. Now some other stakeholders are missing this forum. For example, we have a DDG ENOH. So he has thoroughly known about Minamata Convention and uh, how to dispose this waste. And if you are going for sustainable procurement or uh, green productivity, so then this is one of the stakeholders I recommend. And also our DDG environmental engineering has a play a bigger role. So there should be another important stakeholder and also our youth organization. For example, our some of senior administrators as well as our senior consultants are there. Uh, so they also should be in, a, in the future discussion. So it should be some kind of series of discussions so that we can come up with a very, very practical solutions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for suggestions. I think uh, there are many partners. I, can, I think we can explore uh, another collaboration. Probably uh, during the post-Congress sessions of the SLMA as well. Thank you very much for all the uh, physical participants as well as online participants. I think we had around 120 plus uh, online participants. There were few pending questions as well. We will definitely uh, direct your questions to the uh, expert panel. And I think we have a very, I think we have a very interesting future ahead. Uh, there are talks on uh, different collaborations as well, definitely with IESL, Pathfinder Organization and the Ministry of Health and SLMA. So we are looking forward to future activities as well. So on behalf of uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association, I would like to again thank you, uh, thank our expert panel and also all the participants. Uh, thank you very much. We will meet again and uh, refreshments are available for the physical participants. Thank you very much.